Welcome to Hannah United Methodist Church's online worship for February 14th, 2021. Happy Valentine's Day. And whatever your life situation is, know that the true love of your life is our Lord and God, His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, who have shown their undying, literally undying love for each and every person that God has ever created through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let us celebrate love today. Let us celebrate the glory of God. And let us celebrate the community that means so much to us, where we get to live out the love of God with and among each other. And speaking of community, next Wednesday, February 17th, is Ash Wednesday. And we will be having a drop-in Ash Wednesday observance from 4.30 to 6.30 in the Fellowship Hall. Anytime within those two hours, stop by. I will lead you in a prayer of repentance, and you will receive a piece of sackcloth and ashes, a piece of burlap with an ash cross drawn on it. And you can wear this throughout Lent to proclaim your continuing repentance. I look forward to seeing you there if you feel that it is safe to uh, come in, but uh, it will just be uh, you and I and maybe one or two other people at any given time. So uh, stop on by and um, let us begin our season of Lent with an observance of the repentance that Ash Wednesday represents. Also, as the uh, positivity rate for the COVID virus continues to improve, we are looking at potentially resuming in-person worship on February 28th. Uh, I will make that final decision the week prior to February 28th, but I expect that uh, things will continue and the trend that they have been, and we will gather in the fellowship hall socially distanced and wearing masks as we were doing last fall. But what a joy it is to see some improvement in the spread of the virus and to be able to worship again face to face for those for whom it is safe and those who feel that it is safe for them. Um, let us give thanks to our Lord and God and let us keep hope, trusting in God's presence and guidance with us. I would also like to thank you for your continued faithfulness and giving. It is so much appreciated. And as we have many plans in the works for this coming year, uh, your continued support to keep our church strong is so very important to fulfill the mission that God has given us. So let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Let us give our glory to God. Let us open our worship with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the glory that you have revealed to us of your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, to make wise decisions about living our lives in a way that honors Christ, that follows Christ, that serves Christ by loving you and by loving our fellow human neighbor. We thank you, Lord, for all of the gifts. We thank you, Lord, for your sustaining presence and spirit that has helped us through these difficult times. May we seek out those times of seeing your glory, but may we also take that glory and go down from the mountain to serve our neighbor and to share with all those that we encounter, everyone that we know and meet, the good news of Jesus Christ, your Son, indeed. In his name we pray. And let us now open our worship with our first hymn, Christ Whose Glory Fills the Skies.
Let us now take the concerns that are on our hearts, that fill our lives in this difficult time, to our Lord in prayer, trusting God that he is able, that he is willing, that he is so loving, that he will take care of each and everything that we lay at his feet in prayer. Let us remember in our prayers those who are sick from COVID and other illnesses, those who care for them, those who suffer from all kinds of things, especially those who have grown weary and tired of this year-long pandemic. Let us pray for hope. Let us pray for the presence of the Spirit. And let us pray for the vision to see what God will do, what wonderful things God will make out of this difficult situation. Let us also keep in mind these people who are in our concerns this week. Rita and Glenn, Alan, Sandy, Stephen, Brittany, and Grant, Tony, Linda, Tom and Bev, Jim and Judy, Greg, Judy, Don, Susie, Bill, Buddy, Brenda, and Gloria. Let us take these concerns and all those other things that are upon our hearts to our healing and loving God in prayer. Heavenly Father, you have revealed to us your glory. You have shown us your love. You have shared with us your word. The very Son of God brought to us in human form in the person of Jesus who taught us about your kingdom, who healed our infirmities, who called those in power to account, and who gave hope to all. We pray, Lord, that the healing of Christ might be upon all of the people in the world who are suffering. We pray, Lord, that the comfort of Christ might be upon each and every one of us. And we pray, Lord, that the hope of Christ might live in us that our very lives might show the good news of Jesus Christ by our trust in your care for us and the world, by putting our faith in your Son, Jesus Christ, who redeems us from all of our sins, and for that Spirit that lives within us, that empowers us, encourages us, and leads us into the world in service of your will, and mission for us. May the light of Christ shine through us. May we bring good news to all those that we encounter. And may we walk and live, even when we cannot see the way forward, by faith and by hope in your Son, Jesus Christ, the very one who walked among us, the very one who was born into poverty, who lived a life of oppression and ridicule, but who willingly gave his life that we too might live and that we might know the truth of your will for us. Help us to live into that truth as we offer together the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture today is from Mark chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. As you hear the words of this passage of the gospel, listen for, encounter the living word of God speaking to us. After six days, 
Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Show us, Lord, your glory today. Speak to us through your word and guide us in the way that we should go. Make us wise. Open our hearts to your love, and that we might share that love with others through our encounter with Jesus Christ in this time. And it is in his name that we pray. Amen. Have you ever had a mountaintop experience? I hope that you have. One of those times when you are so filled with joy and excitement, when everything seems to have fallen into place, And when you stand amazed, in awe, at what God is doing in the world and in your life and my life. That's what Peter, James, and John experienced on this high mountain that Jesus had led them to. The transfiguration. A mystery for us to this day. What exactly happened? What did it look like? What is its meaning? And to be honest, although Bible scholars have debated it for years, nobody really understands the meaning and message of the transfiguration. And yet, hopefully, we have had those kind of experiences. Maybe not seeing Jesus and Moses and Elijah in the body glowing and shining brightly in front of us. But I pray that we have had times where we have been aware of the presence of Christ with us and aware of God witnessing to us through the prophets, through the word of Scripture, and through our experiences of life. But right now may seem like a mountaintop experience is far, far away. A long way off. Like, if we can see it at all, it's in the distance. When Pastor Sherry and I were in Israel, there's a mountain there called Mount Tabor. And Mount Tabor is the site that is... It's the site that many use to commemorate the Transfiguration. Although, since it's 60 miles away from Caesarea, where... The disciples and Jesus were just before ascending the Mount of Transfiguration. It's probably not the right mountain. But on top of this mountain is a church, the Franciscan Church of the Transfiguration. Now, Pastor Sherry and I did not go to Mount Tabor. It was actually closed when we were there. It's not open all that often, in fact. But it sits on the edge of the Jezreel Valley, about six miles or so south of Nazareth, about eight miles from the River Jordan. And as Sherry and I drove through Galilee on our way from Nazareth to Jerusalem, you could see Mount Tabor in the distance. 
in this plain of relatively flat valley, rising this bulbous mountain out of the flatness. You could see it for miles and miles. It's not a terribly high mountain, but it is a unique feature in the landscape. You can't miss it. But we didn't get to Mount Tabor. And so often in our lives, we feel like we can't get to these mountaintop experiences. We can maybe see it in the distance, but somehow it's just not in our power to be able to get there. And that's true. It's not in our power to make a mountaintop experience. It's a gift from God when it happens. And it usually is quite surprising. Just like Peter, James, and John were quite surprised with what occurred on that night on that mountain for them. Why they were going up to the mountain, they probably didn't know. But they were following Jesus. And when they got to the top of the mountain, there appeared before them Moses and Elijah and Jesus, shining brightly, whiter than any white in the world. And they were dumbfounded, dumbstruck. They didn't understand what was going on. But they heard the voice of God, proclaimed that Jesus was God's beloved son, whom he loved. And the voice said to follow him. And following Jesus, we seek, we desire, we crave a similar mountaintop experience. A time when we are overwhelmed with the presence of God, where we are just struck dumb and awe in awe of recognizing not only the presence of Christ in our lives, but recognizing who Jesus really is the Son of God. And there are times when we recognize in Scripture, through the law represented by Moses, and through the prophets represented by Elijah, that they were always pointing toward Jesus, that they were always witnessing to the truth of what God was going to do on our behalf, fallen sinners, lost people, people who insisted on following our own way instead of following Jesus. And there on that mountain, Peter and James and John, in their awe, did not know what to do. And so Peter suggests building three shelters, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for Jesus, as if they wanted to box Jesus in, to contain that moment of glory so that they could dwell there, perhaps forever. Certainly that's a good desire. Although Jesus corrected Peter, Peter didn't do anything wrong by suggesting building these shelters. In fact, Peter simply wanted to hold on to that experience. And yet, Jesus and Moses and Elijah didn't remain on the mountain. And Jesus led Peter and James and John off of that mountain, down into the valley where the people were, where real life was, where the work of ministry was. The mountaintop experience was so very important for Peter, James, and John to grasp, no matter how poorly, the reality of who Jesus Christ is. But the work of Christ isn't on the mountain. The work of Christ is in the valley. The work of Christ is among the people. And so, if we grasp the glory of Christ, we have to follow him back down off of the mountaintop. We have to follow Christ 
where he is, walking amongst the people of our world, the lost, the hurting, the sinful, the broken. Because the glory of Christ's meaning is the difference that it can make for the people in the valley. In this time of pandemic, mountaintop experiences are likely pretty remote, just as remote as Mount Tabor was from Sherry and I, even further. Some people may not be even able to see that there is a mountain. They have lost hope. They've grown weary. They are sick of their lives being disrupted. And they yearn for some glory in their lives. They yearn for peace and comfort and hope. They yearn for a positive future. They yearn for meaning. They yearn for human connection. I know I yearn for all of those things. But the story of the transfiguration reminds us who Jesus is, reminds us of what Scripture has always been pointing to, and it reminds us that we can't box Jesus in into those mountaintop experiences that we desire so deeply and so rightly that the way to experience the glory of Christ is to follow Christ down off of the mountain, into the valleys, into the low places, to go where we may not want to go, but to go there because Jesus is there. And if we want to see Jesus shining brightly, we need to see it through the eyes of people who have grasped for themselves the reality of Christ. Through the reality, through the realization of understanding that their sins are forgiven, that God loves them, that they can have life abundant now and forevermore, that all of their brokenness can be made whole, that their infirmity and their pain and their hurt heal. When we see Jesus making a difference in people's lives, we can experience the light and the glory of Christ even more brightly than Peter, James, and John saw it on that mountain. Because the meaning of that event, as mysterious as it is, is surely that the Son of God, who God loves, is one that when we listen to him, we don't have to build a shelter. We don't have to box Jesus in to contain him because nothing can contain the glory of God in Jesus Christ. Things are looking up, perhaps tentatively, that maybe soon life can begin to return to something like the normality that it was before the pandemic hit. But in this time, when we find ourselves in the depths of the valley, let us also find the glory of Christ with us, sustaining us and calling us forward. And instead of boxing Jesus in into what we had before, let us carry Jesus out into the valley, to the broken, to the hurting, to the lost, to the infirm, to the sinner, to the hopeless, to the lonely. Because there, when we bring Jesus to those people, we will encounter the glory of Christ. We will have those mountaintop experiences, not on the top of a mountain, but in the depths of human suffering relieved by the grace of God in Jesus Christ. Let us look forward to what Christ will do through us. Let us prepare ourselves for a future where Christ shines brightly, whiter than any white in the world, through the ministry and the mission that we live right here in Hannah.
Hannah is in the Kankakee Valley. But whenever we follow Jesus, it can become a mountaintop where the glory of Christ is revealed. I so look forward to experiencing that transfiguration. Not the transfiguration of Jesus, but for us to become transfigured. And to people through whom the glorious white light of Christ shines brightly shines into the dark places of the world and brings the healing grace of Jesus wherever we go. I know that's God's will for us. I know that is the mission that God has given us. And I am absolutely certain that God will make this happen if we are faithful and trust God and follow Christ where he leads us. May we follow faithfully. May we follow hopefully. May we follow joyously. Amen. To live the call this week, we need to prepare ourselves to follow Jesus up the mountain, down into the valley. For now, in this time where our outreach is curtailed, where our worship is in this pitiful online method, we can spend this time preparing our hearts and our minds and our lives to witness to the glorious light of Christ through giving extra effort, time, and attention to making sure that we see Christ clearly. We're coming into the season of Lent. Next Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. Lent is a time of repentance and preparation. I pray that our sacrifice for Lent, our fasting for Lent this year, be that we sacrifice the time to spend in prayer with Christ, listening to the Holy Spirit, studying Scripture, not just for what it means, but for what it says to us and our place in this world. It's practicing discipleship. And when we give our full attention to letting the grace of God work in us through prayer and Bible study, through conversing with one another, through seeking the will of God for our lives, we open ourselves up to let our very hearts be a mountaintop on which the light of Christ can shine brightly. Practice. Practice discipleship. Let it plant seeds in you that will grow and bear fruit as we come out of the pandemic. Because God has great plans for us. God has a future for us. God is good. God will lead us to be leaders to introduce people to Jesus Christ. May the mountain of transfiguration live within our very lives. Let us pray. Covenant God, we stand in awe of your love. Your love that seeks not punishment, but the reconciliation of the world. Give us the hands to serve and the words to proclaim your forgiving grace to all we encounter. Empower us to be disciples of Jesus Christ who help to transform the world. May we follow your son, Jesus Christ, wherever he would lead. So that all might know that it is only through Jesus that we can live in the glorious light of your love. So it is in his name that we pray. Amen. Let us now sing our closing hymn, I Stand Amazed in the Present.
God is calling us to reflect the glory of Christ in the world and to prepare ourselves so that we can do that effectively, faithfully, and fruitfully. So as you go about your life this week, seek opportunities to see the glory of Christ, to recognize that wherever you are, Christ is with you, and that is a mountaintop. It's a mountain built on the grace of God, on the love of God, because God loves us. and God loves our neighbors, and God loves our community. So go in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and let the light of Christ shine. Amen, and have a blessed week.